How on earth can we review gaming laptops without discussing the HP Omen specifically? So today we are gonna do it anyhow. Whether you want it or not, even though I am certain that you do, that's why you are here. So keep your eyes fixed, take a deep breath and let it begin. And if like me you love watching reviews but have no second thoughts of purchasing, you are gonna definitely enjoy it like it. Another thing you can still enjoy is turning that red subscribe button grey and is smashing that notification bell is another fun activity to do. So last year's Omen was not that great. Even though it had high end specs, but the overrating issue removed it from the list of recommended laptops to go with. But this year's model has improved greatly with overheating. Even after having such awesome specs. The unit in this video rocks a Intel Core i7-12700H with a 115W RTX 3060 and this CPU gets ridiculously fast in every benchmark, beating out even the high-end Ryzen 9 6900HX with ease. If we look at the Geekbench score here, we can see that the i7-12700H is getting a single core score of 1684, which is really high, considering it is just a 1 gen improvement from the i7-11800H. The multi-core result is the same with a whooping 12510 points. Now if we switch to Cinebench R23, we can see same kind of result with 1735 points in single core benchmarks and 15475 points in multi core result. And I am astounded by Intel's progress from the mediocre 11 generation to the ground breaking 12 generation series. Now looking at the GPU, it is same as it was last year. 115 watt base 3060 with a 15 watt dynamic boost, a quite high TGP for the laptop's GPU. So essentially, it is a mid-tier GPU that can deliver fantastic 1440p gaming. And because it has lot of CUDA cores, you can easily do excellent video editing. Now comes the super fun part, for which this laptop is mostly built for. So without further ado, let the gaming test begin. Now to keep the system cool, after doing this hell lot of gaming, 
two heat pipes are shared by the CPU and the GPU for cooling with one additional pipe going to each. In order to control the heat generated by the VRMs and the graphic memory, there are also two fans, two heat sinks and two large slabs of metal. The bottom of the device has a sizable single vent that may deliver effective airflow, like several other laptops with a single huge partially open vent. This one is not only for aesthetic purpose. You will understand it better after watching how high temperature climbs in our thermal benchmark. So stay with me through the entire video, skipping even a single part is not beneficial at all. The system's thermal testing is the part that most interests me right now. So let's see if the overheating problem from the last year is still an issue or if it has simply disappeared with the sunrise of this year. In our thermal benchmark for three different profiles, we can see the temperature hovers around 52 degrees in battery mode and peak up to a max of 72 degrees in balanced before settling to 68 degrees in performance mode. And this is after the fan starts to kick in rapidly. So yeah, the overheating problem is gone and the cooling is absolutely fantastic. Now moving to the build, as usual, this notebook has a metal base, but a plastic lid that wobbles even when lightly touched. This has an effect on the build quality, because how flexible the lid is when twisted. This has been the problem with the Omen for years. They would have corrected it this year, but they haven't, and here we are once again reviewing the wobbliness of Omen. Hopefully, they will fix the lid flex with the next model, but you know how expectation hurts. This is why we should stick to this model for now. However, I am happy that the base has hardly little flex at all. Now comes the exciting part, the display. You get a 16.1 inch Full HD 144 IPS display that covers 99% of sRGB, 74% of Adobe RGB and 73% of DCI-P3, making the content look really vibrant. And one more thing that it will make more vibrant to look at is that red subscribe button. My advice is to press it. Moving on, the display boosts a peak brightness of 400 nits and a reaction time of 9 milliseconds, both of which are excellent for gaming laptop. This device's battery life is average for a gaming laptop of its price. However, as we all know, gaming laptops are power hungry beasts that performs best when plugged in. So even though the battery capacity is 83 watt hour and it seems large, it is actually typical in this case. If we look at the battery performance, it lasted for about 7 hours of video streaming, 6 hours of productivity and only 2 hours of Photoshop task. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the keyboard backlight was off and the screen brightness was set to 50% during all these works. Moving down to the bottom, we can see a full-sized keyboard. The keyboard itself is rather pleasant with its long key travel and clicky feedback. It has somewhat more key travel than the Lenovo Legion. However, you will see no change. Even if the key travel is somewhat longer, you cannot replicate the mechanical keyboard sensation. As a result, the keyboard doesn't create a competitive situation at all. Although the keyboard is a very large grill, large enough to host a barbecue party with sizzling grilled chicken, but don't try it at home since this laptop can't handle that much of cholesterol. I promise it doesn't like chicken. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Okay, enough of this mediocrity. Oh no, God! No! Now, coming to the port. It's all flooded with these. On the left, you can find a RJ45 connector, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A port, a tiny display port, an HDMI, and a USB Type C Thunderbolt 4 port that support power delivery as well as display output. And as we move to the left, we can only see two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports. The device also support Wi Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. So many of them. And this is what we need in life complete support from all sides. Now, moving to the internal. Memory wise, there are two sodium slots which work with DDR5 modules and support dual channel mode and can be easily upgraded to 32 gigs. As for the storage, you get two M.2 PCI X4 slots that fit Gen 4 drives with a max support of up to 1TB each, simply which means you will be getting pretty fast SSD. Everything so far looks great, right? But should you run for your credit card and place an order for the Omen 16 right away? Well, the answer is no. Hey, hey, wait, I'm not saying don't buy it at all, but the condition is, 
if you don't like bouncy lids, no matter how great the laptop is in other areas. Well, we don't know if the reason is the way the hinges are mounted, but the lid shakes quite annoyingly when you push the laptop. Other than that, HP has done a pretty good job. It has played it safe with the design, but we like the fact that it took the risk to put in the high TGP graphic cards. Now, if you have made up your mind to purchase this laptop, you may do so by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want me to review any other laptop that is swirling in your mind, let me know in the comment section down below. So this will do for the review. Like this video, subscribe to the channel and if there is anything more you want to do, go ahead and do it. Don't forget to share your love. We will meet again in the next video. Until then, bye bye.